Leia here from LeiaFruitSide.com and in this video I will show you why electron donating groups are activating to the benzene ring and orthopara directing. An electron donating group, as the name implies, is a substituent on benzene that has extra electron density that it's able to donate to the benzene ring. The example here is NH2, and as you can clearly see, we have a lone electron pair on the nitrogen that is highly electronegative and, if need be, can resonate into that benzene ring. But the resonance that we're looking at with an electron donating group is not on a neutral substituted benzene. Instead, we want to see and understand what happens when these electrons resonate into the sigma complex, into the positive intermediate that occurs when you undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution. Since it'll take too long to go through all the resonance structures, if you haven't seen it yet, go back to my last video where I take you through the ortho, meta, and para resonance structures for EAS on a substituted benzene. You can find that video along with my entire series on electrophilic aromatic substitution by visiting my website layofersci.com slash EAS. But let's go through the mechanism overview. Let's say we're adding a super electrophile to the ortho position of this aniline or NH2 on benzene. We get an intermediate that has a positive charge capable of resonating in the ring. This is one of the resonance structures, but when we resonate it throughout the ring, just imagine we have the positive dispersed and resonating throughout. Now ask yourself this, if you have a partially negative nitrogen with lone electrons sitting next to a positive intermediate, will that stabilize or destabilize the intermediate? In other words, does that nitrogen make the ring more or less happy compared to just adding something to benzene? Think about the law of opposites in that positives and negatives attract each other, and think about how carbon does not like having charge, positive or negative. For this reaction to occur, carbon must undergo that positive intermediate. So if we can place something on the ring that is negative or partially negative, even the slightest negativity will help counteract some of that positive charge in the intermediate, and this will make the reaction more favorable. So when compared to a regular benzene that will proceed at a certain reaction rate, anything slightly more negative on the ring will speed up that reaction because the negativity stabilizes the positive intermediate, and that by definition is called an activating group. We're activating the ring to react faster by balancing the charge. So instead of memorizing your activating groups, look at your substituents and ask yourself, is it negative? And if so, will it help the intermediate? Common activating groups include oxygen and nitrogen with lone pairs such as amines, alcohols, ethers. You'll also see oxygen and nitrogen bound to carbonyls. And then you'll see the slight activating groups which are carbons, alkyl, or aryl groups. These cannot resonate into the ring, but carbons are considered somewhat electronegative and through hyperconjugation or moral support will still help stabilize that positive charge. So we know that nitrogen activates the ring towards electrophilic aromatic substitution, but how does that relate to its directing effects? Let's take a look at the resonance. In my last video, I showed you a trick on how you can quickly recognize where the carbocation intermediate will reside without going through all the resonance. If you're not comfortable with this trick, go back and watch that video again, but for Ortho, notice we have a carbocation directly near the nitrogen, skip a carbon, another carbocation, skip a carbon, and so on. These orange circles represent the carbocation. Over to the meta addition, notice that the carbocation does not go near that NH2. And finally, for the para position, notice that the carbocation once again can resonate to sit by the nitrogen. So in addition to the idea that the electronegative nitrogen will stabilize the positive intermediate. When you have a choice between ortho and para that have the same resonance structures and both put a carbocation directly near that electronegative nitrogen and compare that to meta where the carbocation does not go near the electronegative nitrogen, it makes more sense that the negative group will prefer to have the super electrophile add ortho or para so that the unstable positive charge can get as close as possible to that electronegative nitrogen. For the meta position, even though the ring is slightly activated, 
Without putting the positive directly in nitrogen, we have less of that stabilization effect and therefore lesser activation of the ring. There's one more thing that you want to keep in mind when your substituent is not only electronegative but actually has lone pairs of electrons. I chose one particular structure from the three resonance that we showed above and this is the stable structure where the electronegative nitrogen is sitting directly near that carbocation. Not only do we have the three resonance structures that we saw earlier, but nitrogen can actually resonate down towards that carbocation forming a bonus fourth resonance that you don't see otherwise. Notice that in both of these structures, nitrogen is now pi bound to the ring and nitrogen is carrying the positive charge. Electronegative atoms such as carbon and nitrogen do not like to hold positive charge. But when you have resonance structures, the charge is being shared over multiple atoms and the more resonance structures that you have, the more the charge is shared, the more stable it's going to be. So having a fourth bonus structure means that every charged intermediate is only carrying a quarter of the charge, making it so much more stable, so much more happy, and therefore so much more activated towards the reaction. This is just one example. I actually worked through many more substituted EAS examples in my membership site, which you can find at studyhall.layofforsci.com. And be sure to join me in the next video where I take you through deactivating meta directors, followed by the halogen exception. And you can find this on my website at layofforsci.com EAS. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.